Yeah, belt. belt. This is new belt. We have so much money. We use zip ties as belts. <laughs> the f is that? The button fell off. This is what $75 worth of McDonald's breakfast looks like, but they asked for it, so I got it. And when he was like going through his stabilized time setting the dyno, you could see his back tires were like way low in air. They were all like wrinkled up like crazy. And about the time that he makes his pull, the tire grenades and goes flying. Oh, Lucky for him, the dyno operator got missed, but grenades the tire, and then later he was talking, he's like, man, I've, I've used those tires for like 10 years. And I was being like 100% dead sarcastic, but I didn't miss a beat, and so I was like, but did you ever change the air in that time? I mean, if the air's 10 years old, he's like, dude, I never even thought about that. <laughs> and like, he was dead serious. Now I didn't know how to like get out of that one without <laughs> making him, him look like an idiot. <laughs> When are we going testing? Because earlier this week it was Wednesday or Thursday. Well, it's yeah. not Wednesday anymore. It's Thursday now. Lars, you want to go testing tonight? Sure. Sounds so excited. He'd rather go Saturday. I just have to drive a pro well, It's terrible. <laughs> I have to say, I went to a slip hole last night. I was there for three hours. I'd say I was bored for about two hours and 38 minutes. It's not that bad. It was close to that bad. If there's one thing about slip pulling that would still appeal to me, it would be to build a truck for that class of a common rail. Just like, do, do everything that they don't do. Like, build your own truck as much as you can. Not this cookie cutter, easily or shy. Uh, whatever. Yeah. yeah, because Aisley and Shy, eh, yeah, yeah, they're just little guys, you know. They don't know what they're doing, clearly. I mean, we could, we could easily beat that with a common rail. Easy. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Hey guys, today we're doing an injector install on a uh, 07 and a half 67 truck that uh, he had come in a few weeks ago with wanting us to just install a tune on it and as soon as he unloaded off the trailer, it turns out we could hear right off the bat that he had a little bit more than an issue that would be fixed with a tune. So um, we ended up looking in, into it and we're doing some injector kill testing and uh, found out that we had a bad injector in this truck. This truck is a, has a 100,000 miles on it and we had an injector go bad. So we are replacing it with Exergy Sportsman 6.7 injectors. I'd like to thank Coke for supplying me in the nectar of good days. A sponsorship of Coke would be greatly appreciated. What's somebody been doing in their extracurricular activities? This is Trevor Amos's 2005 G56 truck. We have tuned the truck originally back in 2015. Um, he had 100 horsepower injectors, 6275 compound setup, and a stock CP3. At the time, 
with the stock CP3, we were only able to get 650 horsepower out of it. Now he added a second CP3 and wants a max effort tune in it. Uh, so I had flashed a max effort tune in it and we squeezed 825 horsepower out of the max effort. So adding the second CP3 to where he was able to maintain rail pressure and not drain any, we were able to pick up quite a bit of horsepower. So I will get him off the dyno and send him on the way. Oh hell, I'll give you five if you make that. I almost guarantee you that I will not make that. I'd almost say 20, but, uh... Nope. <laughs> we could make a house! We just cut a round hole in it. We could have a hobbit house. What's inside? What's inside? Oh. What? Do you need a back rub? <laughs> mm -mm. This kit comes with a complimentary back rub <laughs> to relieve the stress right before you start working on it. That's a lot. I know, it looks very nice though. Yeah. I like it. I bet it's somewhere here. Why are you reading the instructions, Josh? Don't thought, you put, don't I thought you, you were better than that. Don't you put it together and then read the instructions and take it back apart and no. do it right? No, you do it. <laughs> read the instructions and then do it once. Do you want me to read that for you since you don't? I'm looking at the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> we got Mike Sports Gen in the shop today. We're adding a pusher, add a turbo kit with a 475 over top of a S300 series of some sort. We haven't measured it to see exactly what it is yet, but we're adding a turbo over top of it. Yay! When sh don't fit, it takes all that to make it fit. This morning we got Jimmy Cantaloupe's 2006 Mega Cab on the dyno. This is a stock long block with ARP 2000 head studs. Has Exergy 200% overs, dual pumps, a BD pulse flow manifold, and a GT a GT 4508R, which is like an 80 millimeter inducer or compressor wheel, a 87 millimeter compressor uh, turbine wheel, and like a 10 exhaust housing. Um, so we'll be curious to see how that turbo performs, what power curve we can get out of it. Uh, this is something that uh, we're, we know that with a stock bottom end we're somewhat limited on the power we can make, uh, but hopefully we can hit a thousand horsepower or more and we'll keep the torque in a safe range. The transmission is a full billet uh, transmission, has uh, a firepunk valve body, I believe Chris Gelbaugh built the transmission, has a gale run converter. Uh, overall it should be a uh, uh, a well-rounded street truck, something he takes out and can daily drive and have some fun with. So we'll see what we can do on the dyno today. Okay, we've made a couple dyno poles on Jimmy's truck and we're finding that it likes the the turbo does not like to have a lot of added timing uh, below 3000 rpm. I'm trying to bring it up on stabilized time around 2700 rpm. Uh, we try to bring it up on boost as low in the rpm curve as we can to where we can get a full you know thousand rpm sweep through the power curve and figure out where peak power really is. Um, when we first pulled it, I started on tune three that had a conservative timing tune. We were about 15 degrees of timing at 2500 RPM and 20 degrees of timing at 3500 RPM, which is a cons very conservative timing table. Um, but what we found is that tune uh, did 854, but it actually spooled the turbo better than we did on tune four when we had a max effort timing curve in it. So with the max effort timing curve, we found that after 3300 RPM, the timing actually helped and made more power. We did 899 horsepower uh, with about the same fuel quantity, um, but the low end of the added timing table, which would be tuned four, which is, uh, I think it was 20, about 20 degrees of timing at 2500 RPM and 28 degrees of timing at 3000 RPM, that actually made about 75 less horsepower in the lower RPM because the turbo was actually surging. You could hear the turbo surge. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, uh, but the lower timing is actually making a later end of injection, 
uh, which is putting more fuel in the late burn cycle after top dead center, which is making more EGTs, more energy to drive that turbo. Uh, so the tune I'm just flashing in now has a lower timing curve up to 3200 RPM, and then after 3200 RPM, then we're ramping in timing, and that should give us the best of both worlds for the flattest power curve possible. So sometimes with these big single turbos, it's not just uh, a textbook max effort timing curve. You have to kind of look at your data, figure out what works best for this truck, and go from there. So we're going to put this tune in it and see if we can actually get a better power curve all the way through the curve. Okay, let's talk about the timing changes we made to the truck. Green power curve made a peak power of 899. The red power curve made a peak power of 854. But you can see below 3400 RPM all the way down at 2900, we have almost 75 horsepower gain on the red, red graph. And the red graph was the lower timing. Um, so we were, we were all the way down at like 15 degrees here. So what I did with the blue line here is I, I took the combination of these, uh, the red pole and the green pole, and we did the added timing after 3300 RPM, and we did the lower timing under 3300 RPM, and what you got is you see the timing, uh, the lower timing pretty much made the same power, but then right in here you see where we added the timing and you would get that gain, and we did 909 horsepower, and all three of these pulls are the exact same fuel quantity, 2,000 microseconds. And this is all just manipulation of the timing curve. So not every time do you, is the a max effort timing curve correct for all the way through the pull. So based on, there's a lot of variables that we could go in depth on on these engines when you talk about uh, the squish, the swirl of the air, and how and your injector spray patterns and how it meets, that all affects what the peak timing curve is going to be. Your piston spray pattern and bowl, uh, that is all very dependent. So not one timing curve is going to be the answer for all the trucks. That's why we like to dyno tune these trucks so we can see real world results and get the best possible power curve uh, at the same fuel quantity. So now I know that at the same fuel he's making an extra 75 horsepower which correlates to another 125 or 150 foot pounds of torque uh, just by manipulating the timing curve. Okay, we got Jimmy's truck all wrapped up. We ended at 918 horsepower. It's a little bit less than what we were hoping for, uh, but at high RPMs, if we added fuel, the horsepower stayed the same. So that tells us we're out of air or air flow. So the stock head is either being a restriction or we simply can't get enough air out of the turbine side of this uh, 87 millimeter turbine on this uh, GT4508R. I'm not very familiar with these uh, GT4508 GT turbos, so I'm not really exactly sure where the restriction is, but uh, we're going to get him off the dyno, and hang on, I gotta do Larson impression. And we're gonna send him on his way.